It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out, it's trash day. Putting you out of my mind. It's trash day, I'm putting you out, it's trash day. I'm putting you out, trash day, I'm putting you out of my mind. Now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up, now I'm gonna clean up the house. Taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage, taking all your garbage. And welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Weekend episode. It's Mark the Mark and Sir Michael Jenks. We had talked a lot. We talked a lot before coming on air, and I have a lot of coffee in me. So we need to calm down. Because you already threw me under the bus, you son of a bitch. I didn't mean to. I didn't think I was going to this early on. So that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. So we're pretty heated over something that came up this week, and it happened on Sunday, so this has been a week-long stew for me, (sighs) but we'll get there. Yeah. How was the rest of the flooring, and how was the rest of your week, sir? So the rest of the week, let's see, I started off sick, uh, thanks to my lovely niece. (laughs) That's amazing. She had a sinus thing going on last week. She was over at my house while her mom was at work, and I'm working from home. And then I picked it up earlier this week and just got over it. So that was fun. Uh, Then flooring went great. We got the living room done, almost done last night. I was over there this morning doing some touch-ups before the podcast. And my brother-in-law and sister are there now doing in the final pieces of the floor. And then we can put the trim down and it's, uh, it'll be grand. The mom's house, living room and dining room have been re-floored. So is mom happy? Mom loves it right now. Uh, I took it. She had to go to work this morning. Uh, She does payroll for a local hospital up here in parts unknown. So uh, she went to work and she told me this morning that she loved it. So uh, that's a good thing. That's a win. That's a win. Yeah. There's a win. Pat on the back for the Sir Master. Yeah. I don't know where the hell that came from. Sir Master. I don't know either, but I'll take it, you know. So what else did you do then you had to get over the flu and let me say this because i want to give a quick shout out to you guys already early on in the podcast at the 40 year dash i'm actually jealous of you guys because Why are you jealous? well i'm jealous because as much as i listen to you guys and and this is gonna this goes back a year and a half i would like to work from home for a little bit i'm sure you're over it because it's a different atmosphere. Like I had a, and I'm not making this about me real quick because we'll get there. Um, I had a rough week and I'm just like, damn, I would like to work from home. I really would just to see how, you know, it helps the mentalness because sometimes I do like being by myself. I would imagine a year and a half of it, just you and your dog, you're ready to drink every day and be (laughs) loco. But I'm a little jealous there that you wake up, you work, <laughs> you don't have to leave your house. A little bit of an introvert in me in the last couple months. Yeah, and I mean, it's nice if somebody gets you upset at work or gets you pissed off, you can just walk down the hall for five minutes, <laughs> take a breather, scream your head off, and then come back and you're fine. Or, unfortunately for my dog, she has become an unlicensed therapist, so I'll just talk to her for 20 minutes. But... Right. I, I mean, it's nice, but to your point, I live alone. I need to get out. I will say that there has been some aspects where I do take my mom to work every morning, so that helps me get out of the house. It helps me get just a different change of scenery type of thing. Because me looking at the same uh, aquamarine colored walls in my office every day kind of gets old. No, I, and so, I understand that. Yeah. I do understand that, that, you know... And I'm not. I'm gonna throw you under the bus now. Um, <laughs> let's not say boo hoo that you have not left your house in a year and a half. Yeah, you, no, you've, yeah. you've gone to Pumpkinville or whatever, and you went and had some beers. Right. But right. just knowing that you know you're chill from home, I this is gonna hurt me probably. There's days I fucking hate people. I hate <laughs> people, and it would like it would be nice to know that. All right. At least every Friday or every Wednesday, I can work from home. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, clearly, you can as a garbage man. You can't. Right. You know, I, it, that would suck to have everybody on my street bring their garbage to my house. Here you go, Mark. You said you wanted to work from home. 
<laughs> Process yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah. But I mean, you're right. And I'm not boohooing on myself and saying, oh, I need to get out and all that. It, it's nice. It's relaxing. Uh, it's also something that, you know, some days I just prefer to be in the office, but they keep me busy. And what's hard about working from home, Mark, is what I've discovered is you don't necessarily, you can't necessarily turn it off because you always want to be on. Yeah. If that makes sense. Nope. Because it's the, it's the ease of access at that point. You have the setup. You're good to go. Oh, you know what? I'm going to work an extra hour. Or, you know what? I'm bored tonight. Let me go jump on to work for another two hours or something like that. Like, I've been told by my boss I need to cut back some. And I appreciate them for doing that at my job. But at the same time, I'm like, well, you know, it's there. I can get it done. And then I'm caught up for whatever in the week. And maybe I can leave at 3.30 on Friday instead of 4 or 5. You know what I mean? So it's i could see that temptation is more here yeah the temptation is more here now being in the house it's ease of access i can just jump on and do it and just be on it for god knows how many hours in the day uh so that that's the one i think that's one of the major downsides to it is you just you can jump on at any point in time and just go back to work but that um, that says something to your work ethic though because i'm sure and, and i was being a dick about all of this that <laughs> Imagine that, right? Um, <laughs> I'm sure there's people that have taken advantage of working from home saying, oh, yeah, I'm getting this done. And, you know, they're not rolling out of bed till 10, 11 o'clock in the morning or doing whatever. But, yeah, yeah that, that just says something to your work ethic that, you know, Saturday night watching a Penn State game, uh, I'm just sitting here. Why not, you know, Google this, that or whatever for work or whatever. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, no, I understand that. So turning it off is is key because that but that goes along with um jenks you know i'm saying it is our sicknesses or weaknesses but i think we're both like that because as soon as i lay down at night i now do have a notebook by the bed because i'm thinking about stuff for the podcast i'm thinking about you know the whole and i'm going to announce this real quick if you haven't seen it that i posted earlier this week um the whole merchandise thing came from me laying down and partnering with somebody. It wasn't yeah. like, you know, I, I used to buy my shirts, you know, $1,000 up front and then sure as shit hope to sell them. And then, you know, two years later, I have last year's designs that I'm trying to get rid of for a dollar fifty. That's no more. But it, it's the yeah. creative geniuses in us is what it is. It is. It's that it's allowing that creative outlet and it never turns off. I have the same thing. I have a notebook by my bed or if not, I'm putting it in my phone. If I think of something, it's you have that creative awareness that anything can hit you wherever you're at. If you're in the shower, if you're on the back of a garbage truck or you know what I mean? Anywhere you can be at, sometimes it just hits you because your mind has turned off from it. Has pulled yourself away from it. You can think of those new ideas and the creative juices. And by the way, quick plug for the merch store before we get into that it looks fantastic on there i'm gonna have to buy a couple items off of that merch store there yeah. in a little bit. so but before we get into that mark how's your week my week i had a stressful week i, I really yeah. did I, and i don't know why i can't pinpoint what set me off uh maybe it was just king of the ring list last sunday that set me off or something i just <sighs> On the Martinez Lounge, your wife is probably going to bury me. Um, but I, I don't know literally what set me off this week. And I've just been kind of in a funk. One of my um, friends from IWC posted on Monday. Uh, it's it, As a wrestler, as a wrestling fan, you guys will know. Uh, the Dime Piece, she posted something. There's something just wrong. I feel a little bit off. And I was completely there. And I'm not one usually to share stuff like that on the socials. But I'm like, well, maybe this will help. So I kind of talked with her over it and everything. And I don't know if there was a full moon or if Sagittarius was aligned with Uranus or I don't know any of that shit. (laughs) But essentially, I just felt off uh, Monday. And it kind of just trickled downhill the whole way. Um I don't know. I I, I don't know. I I did bounce back uh, later on in the week, but yesterday 
I, I don't want to say I relapsed, but I was just like, oh, it's my day off. I am not doing anything. Well, that didn't go anywhere because I was going to go to a wrestling event last night and then I ended up going to work. Instead, yeah. it is it, a different part of, you know, the the enterprise that I work at. And I don't mean podcasting. I just right. <laughs> the, the real job. <laughs> and I'm like, son of a bitch. There goes the wrestling show that I was going to go to because I would have gotten there, but it would have been probably like a match into it. And if you know me, if I'm late to a wrestling event, that sets off more of my anxiety than anything else. I don't want to be that yeah. guy walking in. And so I'm like, all right, clearly I can't go to this one. But... Um, I do have a vacation planned, which is nice. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Next week, there will be no Can Crushers weekly show. I'm going to throw that out there because uh, the English professor and myself and uh, the, uh, I'll say his name just Pat nicely. I'll be nice to him this week. Um, we're going to <laughs> Celeb Fest 2 in Baltimore, Maryland. And... It's kind of a big wrestle con. Uh, I already have um, a meet in Chelsea Green, so she's going to sign my tattoo, so my artist can then sign her uh, tattoo, her name on it. The inspiration, um, the iconics are going to be there. Nick Gage is going to be there. There's a lot of there's a lot of people. There was it was supposed to be a major AEW event, but the MLB screwed it up. Oh. Because, How'd that happen? Well, because the MLB is playing on Wednesday night. Uh, so there's no dynamite this coming Wednesday. That's right. It's yep. on Saturday. So that pulled Sammy, Darby, Britt, Rebel, Nyla, Malachi, and Sting all off of this event. That Wow. Yeah. John's little boy, they had tickets for the Darby and Sting double pick. I had a pick I had the the Sammy um, thing I was gonna do, and then clearly I would, you know, I would have went up and talked to my homegirl Britt, and you know, anyway. But yeah, yeah. So they pulled all the AEW stars, but it is still a huge, huge crop of talent there. That um, if you're in Baltimore, you still be able to get tickets and head down there. They're announcing all the signing prices this week, but it doesn't matter. I have uh, husband money. Hidden <laughs> to get some of some of Do the. You, go ahead. I was gonna say, is this like hidden in a sock drawer or something like? I don't want to give away your uh, hiding yeah. place. And nor will I. <laughs> and she knows I have husband money. It's just it, it, yeah. I just can't say where it's at. Yes, there is money, you know, hidden somewhere. Uh, I'm not even gonna say it's in the house. So, uh, fair. You know, I laugh because my brother-in-law has husband money too hidden from my sister that i know that i know about and we always laugh about it because she always tries to find it and it's kind of hilarious when she goes on in, on into the thick of it to find it into the thick of it thick of it into the thick into of the it, thick of it. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. um so yeah so I'm a, I'm a little excited for next week it's saturday and there's an event afterwards uh a little bit like a mile up the street that we didn't buy tickets for yet, but uh, we're going to ballpark to see if uh, we want to do the wrestling event after a long wrestling event, or if we want to do uh, wings and beers and possibly just sit outside and do whatever. If it's raining in Baltimore, then we're probably going to the wrestling event. Yeah. So. That sounds like a good little getaway. Yeah, it will be. It, it really will be. So. Yeah, other than that, um, the merch store. Yes, the merch store is what we're at. We're going to talk about that as of right now, um, and more is to come. Uh, just letting you know that there will be some beanies, there will be hats coming as well. They're all kind of in the in the works of things. So I partnered with teespring.com, okay? And uh, anybody can do this. So if you have merch that you guys want to get out there as well, I'm telling the masses along with the 40-year-old Dash and the Martinez yeah. Lounge people. Um, <laughs> if you want to do this, you know, you just kind of send your logo in and then they'll work with prices for you after you pick some of the stuff you want. And then uh, it, it, it's almost like a 70-30 
spread. I'll just put it that way. That, you know, they're making this stuff once people order it and shipping it off, and then they'll give you some of the profits. So, yes, um, it is a way for us to get some money, um, but it's also a business for them. So if you see me in an event or if the 40-year-old Dash does this and you see them at an event or something, you're like, oh, man, I'd like a, a hoodie. Uh, we're going to direct you to our website because as podcasters and human beings and husbands and family members and everything, I don't have the overhead to keep a thousand hoodies or, you know, T-shirts or like that. When yeah. we're doing this, we're doing that to the house and it only makes more sense. So I'm going to direct you to the website and say, here, go order it. It'll be like two to three weeks before they get it to you, but you know it's you know top of the line, fresh. It, I, it's not been sitting in my basement underneath um, mothballs or anything like that. <laughs> Plus, they give you a ton of different options. Uh, if you want a green Can Crushers hoodie, you can order green. If you want the charcoal gray or a black or a white or a pink or whatever you want, you get to pick your color with the logo on it. And everything. So it's a really cool website. Um, so if you want our website, it is the first thing that you'll see on our Can Crushers page. It is also on our main website, um, cancrushers69.wixsite.com backslash Can Crushers. Uh, you'll be able to order from there. That thing brings you over. Um, it'll pop up all the time. It'll always be available for you guys to order stuff. But... Jenks, yeah, as of right now, we have hoodies, we have tees, we have a, what the hell do you call it, a coffee mug, they call it a yep. tumbler, um, yep. stickers, a long sleeve shirt, you think I would know this and write it down, but this is how Can Crushers rolls, people, you know how it is. Do you want me to, do you want me to list it off, because I pulled it up, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, we got classic tees for toddlers, uh, the youth as well. Long sleeve tees, coffee mugs and tumblers, tank tops, uh, leggings, which I was surprised to see. That was a nice addition. You don't usually see that. Well, that was uh, stickers. And that hoodies. was my wife. Uh, okay, no. fair enough. <laughs> yeah, fair. But there's a lot of good stuff here, and I'll tell you what. I was eyeing up the tumbler, a sticker, and maybe a hoodie. So, I'm gonna put some a lot of money into that. I think so. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm pretty excited about it, and um, let's see. Where it goes, as you noticed, Jenks, it was leaked earlier this week on the social medias, and I know a lot of the people, there's sometimes we get a lot of interaction on social medias, and then there's some weeks that I think my social media disappears. <laughs> I really do. And this was one of the weeks that I think social media disappeared, because I'm like, what the fuck happened? I'm posting stuff, and nobody's liking it, Nobody, maybe I just pissed somebody off, or I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they're mad about the King of the Ring thing that Fox put on as well. I, I don't. I, it could be. They could be very upset about that. Yeah. I mean, that list was pretty atrocious. That top ten list was atrocious. But yeah. So <laughs> yeah, uh, get out there and buy some merch, guys. Uh, all right, let's plow through this because literally after the football games last week, um, Fox aired a King of the Ring special, kind of to promote what was to come up this coming Friday with the start of the King of the Ring and the Queen's Crown. They put out the top 10 King of the Ring winners. All right, here's Fox's list. Jenks, you can jump in when you want. Uh, I know we both made our own list, and you are already hated on mine, but starting at number 10 for Fox was King Corbin. I, I don't even know what, how that makes the top 10, but okay. Yeah, I didn't. That, that yeah, set me yeah, off right off the bat. Yeah. Number okay. number nine put me over the fucking edge, though, because number nine, they have Macho Man that far down. Fuming. Yeah. Fuming by now. <laughs> Eight yeah. was Seamus. Seven was Angle. Six was Edge. Five was Brock. Four was Triple H. And this is really where it gets crazy now. Three was Brett. Two was Austin, and one was Booker T. And I think uh, the birthday boy Max is ripping into something in the kitchen because I hear him just – he must have found his birthday treats. <laughs> Go to town, buddy. I don't care. 
He's I, one. He's one today, by the way. So happy birthday, Max. Well, happy happy birthday, Max. I love it. Uh, Bailey's looking into her bone over. Here. I don't know where she went now. Oh God, she's loose. Uh, <laughs> she was eating her bone in front of me. Now she's gone. So I don't know where the hell she went. But uh, Booker T at one kind of. I liked Booker T as the king, but one's too high for Booker. The one's T. way too high for Booker T. One is way too high. I mean, their list—they have some decent ones on there. But what, what's your top ten? Because I want to hear yours. All right. I, again, I'm going to go backwards ten to one. All right. Yeah. I have Edge at number ten. Okay. Okay. And, and you're like, why? Because Edge was somebody by then. I, I really do. He didn't need this King of the Ring. So he just, here, let's make him King of the Ring. And I'm an Edge fan, so I wanted him on it. Um, nine was Owen. Uh, so far down, yeah, because there's others that um, I like that Owen had it. But this isn't the this isn't where Owen was made then, you know? Uh, he wasn't there yet. Uh, I did get Seamus on the list at number eight. Um, personal reasons, I, I've always been a Seamus fan. Number seven, I have Mabel. Go ahead, Jenks. I, I guess I want to hear your reasoning behind it because I, I just do not. I think Mabel might be my last King of the Ring on the list ever. So close to the bottom, yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of Mabel, but tell me, give me your reasoning behind it. His was entertaining to me. It was just he was a big man. I don't know. I, I the hokiness of it. Um, not that they did much with him or or anything. Just. It was that era. He was, again, I'm stuck on the word hokey. That it, give it to the big man. He's going to run with it. Um, I think there's worse ones than Mabel out there. I really do. Okay. All right. Um, number six is Triple H. Number five is Harley Race. Uh, they say Don Morocco was the original one, and I know the English professor has has brought this up before, but I don't remember Morocco really winning it, so Harley was the first one to me. Um, so Harley gets on the list. Booker at four, Savage at three, and then one and two were so close. Um, you have to know who one and two are. Brett's the only one that won it twice. Yeah. Okay. But what it did for Stone Cold is, I don't know, transcending. Because, yes, he won the King of the Ring, and he really never pandered to the King of the Ring. But Austin 316 says, I just kicked your ass. Boom! There is Austin. And, and what has changed in the wrestling world that we know up until that point. So that's why I think the most influential uh, King of the Ring has to be Stone Cold. That's fair. Um, and spoilers, that's my number one too, but I was going to get into that. Kind of the same point on that one. So, I mean, I, that list doesn't surprise me besides Mabel. I'll say that. Seamus, I was a little on the fence about, but Mabel was the only one that took me by surprise. So let's get into my top ten. Yeah, what's yours? Then? Okay. All right, number 10, I had Angle. Uh, I did love King Kurt, so he was getting on the list. Now I have Triple H. Wow. Um, I didn't know, I didn't feel, I mean, he it helped his career a lot. I just didn't think that was his spark. It wasn't until he became that serious, down-to-earth guy about mid-99 that I think it kicked off Triple H for me. So that's why he's low. Eight. I'm a big William Regal fan. I know he didn't do much with the King of the Ring, but he I just love William Regal and that I thought it fit his persona well. Seven I have Edge. Uh similar reasons to what you said. Six, I have King Booker. Um I love King Booker. Wasn't my favorite character. It got kind of annoying towards the end, but I did love King Booker. Five, I have Savage. I have Randy Savage. Four is Harley Race. Three, I have Owen, because I think that whole run in 94 that started at, well, Survivor Series in 93 with Brother Brett, and that ended at, not even ended, but almost hit that climax at the 94 SummerSlam in the cage. That whole run, really, I think, level said, Owen is as good, or if not better, than Brett. I'm not saying he is better, but I think that really helped put Owen on a solid foundation to continue his career forward 
So I put Owen at three. My two and one are the same as yours. Brett at two, the same reasons. Double champion. I'm a big Brett fan. We know that. Uh, loved the king of the original, well, the televised pay-per-view king of the ring. It was the first one of that. And Austin, again, it kicked off his career. That was legitimately the launching point for Stone Cold. And he, every history changed at that point in time. Oh, I what agree. Do people know, yeah. So, so there, there's ones that we didn't get on the list. Um, yeah. And let's talk about some of them. Um, Corbin, no. They, yeah. they, so Shinsuke is one that they don't even recognize on, on the wiki yet. That they they don't recognize that he won it. So is he yeah. not the 2020 King of the Ring? I don't think he is because he just stole the crown from Corbin. Okay. So I think I don't think they recognize him as it. It's just right now the prompt prop until there's a new king named. Well, so. he, he's given it up as of now. Given, too, so. Yeah, right. That's true. That's fair. Uh, neither one of us brought Lesnar. No. See, with Lesnar, he was – honestly, he was on his way to being made. He yeah. didn't need the King of the Ring 2002. I think that should have went to Van Dam. I understand why they gave it to him, but he didn't need that King of the Ring at all. Uh, the other one, Bad News Barrett. I really wanted – Neville to win that King of the Ring. Pock. Uh, Pock at this point, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, Ken Shamrock defeated The Rock in Pittsburgh in 98. I mean, that set up a good rivalry between the two. That hadn't been already brewing that entire year. I think that was a great... If I had an 11, I would say Shamrock. Really? Yeah. I thought that was a I thought that was a pretty good King of the Ring finals match. In that whole rivalry in that I like Ken Shamrock a lot at that point. Okay. And then there I as we were coming on the air, um I forgot Billy Gunn even won uh a King of the Ring. And that kind of sparked us to get going real quick. Yeah. Uh, DiBiase won it as well, along with Tito Santana. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I th- th- there's a couple that I just are like, what? I don't remember. But that's, again, what? either my CTE or whatever. Click it in. Well, right. Well, and Mr. Ass, I mean, the only reason I remember that is because The Rock buried him later that summer, and that was just, it just killed the whole momentum of that 99 King of the Ring run. Because yeah. they had that whole setup, and then he did that prayer to God about Billy Gunn, and it was over at that point. So... <sighs> Yeah, but you the, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you no, ahead. you say that Mabel is your bottom of the barrel king of the ring. I think it's one of the worst. Okay, and maybe that's hindsight, but I I, I don't know. I just didn't like Mabel as the king of the ring. Uh, mine is Corbin. I I just yeah. E- even fair. though you know it was it's recent and he turned into werewolf Corbin again, King Werewolf. I'm <laughs> like, man, what the hell are they doing? I, I don't know. I-, I I really, but yeah, I I don't know. I I what well, I think it's because of where it went. I'm kind. I I will say this. I'm enjoying. I enjoyed the down in the dumps Corbin into. I don't know if I'm gonna enjoy Happy Corbin. Like, I hate I like, Happy Corbin right now. Yeah, right. yeah, it's not that great. But down in the dumps, Corbin it was amazing. I, yeah. I enjoyed that, and I think that might be what's overshadowing it because it it transitioned into that down in the dumps, Corbin. It set up down in the dumps, Corbin. So, yeah, yeah that's probably why I, it's Barrett Mabel in that range. All right. Well. But, at least we, we we get the we get the banter about this all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm going to throw this out to Can Crusher Nation uh, next week uh, as we're off. Okay, but call in for in two weeks or send us an email in, in two weeks. I want to know you guys' um, King of the Ring. Give us a top ten. You know, call in at eight six six two nine nine. 
six six eight seven. Are you fucking kidding me, Mark? Again, CTE that I, I don't have written down. Let me pull it up on my phone. Don't call that number I just gave you because that might not even be the right number. <laughs> while you while you pull that up, I will say yeah, I was right. I was right. You plus C now call that number, guys. Yeah, eight one four two nine nine six six eight seven. Leave us a message or do it the old generic way. Uh, Can crush your sixty nine at gmail dot com. Go ahead, Jenks. Uh, the only thing I was going to say about the King of the Ring is I'm just ecstatic it's back. I think it should be a whole pay per view, but that's neither here or there. But- I I completely agree, but I I did like it on Friday night thus far, and I think it's going to carry over to Monday. But we'll wait because we'll get there. Because yeah. as we were actually recording Ask Can Crushers last week, I got four more questions sent in as we were recording, Jenk. So I figured, well, we might as well give them props and answer them this week. So we're going to answer right. them, then we'll take our break, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll do some wrestling, and then we'll just do some announcements in the third segment, okay? Sounds good. All right. So this is Will. Will sends in, and he's from None Your Business. <laughs> do you know where that's at? <laughs> well, it's definitely at uh, Know Your Old Boulevard, that's for sure. Right? And, he, and I copied it down, and he, he wrote it phonetically. None. N-O-N. Ya. Biz. Miss. Just exactly like <laughs> None of your business. Love it. So you guys named your Mount Rushmore of matches. What are your bottom four? Of matches? I don't remember oh. us ever naming our Mount Rushmore of matches. Do you remember? I, I'm going way no. back. Because clearly he didn't hear what we were talking about when we were recording the show. And I'm, no, I'm not saying that mean, Will, because yeah. we are not live. Um, last week, we talked a lot about factions. So I'm going to spin it that way, Jenks. I, I don't <laughs> think he meant matches because I, I, I can't. There's a million matches that I would say are horrible. And I've seen a lot of them this year. So, That's, yeah. <laughs> Right, that's that's a tough one to even pick a bottom four of matches. Right, um, yeah. I mean, I've if seen so much. I'm not saying this mean. I've seen so much more than you have on the indie circuit that I'm like, whoa, what the hell was that? Yeah, and I don't even remember some people. So, oh. so maybe he meant factions, since we yeah. kind of alluded to it earlier last week that we were doing factions and everything. So. Well, from none your business, I don't know what you meant, but I'm going to say he means our bottom four factions. Okay. If not, he can rewrite his question and actually tell us where the fuck it's from. Right. So oh, I'll thanks. let you go first. Oh, thanks. I, gotta, I had to pull up a list of factions so I can take a look at this. Well, I would say the first one, actually, I know two off the top of my head. Disciples of Apocalypse and Los Barricas, that whole 97 run between those two, I did not enjoy them at all. So I'd say those two make my bottom of the list. Um, I'll also throw in the core, which was the ripoff of Nexus. That one, I, it, ha- it went absolutely nowhere, and it made no sense to me. And the final one, God... Uh, I'm going to say the League of Nations wasn't that great. It had four good people in it, but it wasn't. It wasn't that great. Wow! So I think that's my four. I think that's my wow. four. Wow! See, the League of Nations I was all right with. <clears throat> so uh, they they had a good thing with Roman at the Rumble, but it just didn't work for me. It didn't seem like it was authentic i don't know but i didn't enjoy it so okay all right um these are relatively easy for me okay um one is the oddities okay yeah horrible horrible uh the other one is kevin sullivan's group in wcw um I can't think. Oh, I can't Dungeon think of the of, name of it. The Dungeon of Dungeon Doom. Yes, wasn't it? I yes, forgot about them. They were absolutely horrible. Absolutely yeah. horrible. Um, with 
trying to make uh, Brutus Beefcake the man with no name or whatever the that was. Well, and then you have the Yeti. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm taking out League of Nations, putting them in. Oh, all right. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Right. But yeah, go ahead. Um, no, the Dungeon of Doom was the match. It's the Faces of Fear. The Faces of Fear. Was oh, it. that's it. Yes, that's yeah. it. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Yep. Was it? All right, now I'm looking. Yeah, I think it was. I know it was the face of Sophia. Um, number three on my list is when Cody tagged with the uh, the Ascension. They were Outland Wasteland or something like that. You you at least know uh, he was Stardust at that time. Um, oh man, I forgot about that one. Oh. Yeah. Cosmic Wasteland. Okay. I just typed it in. Cosmic Wasteland. Okay. All right. So we have the Faces of Fear. We have the Cosmic Wasteland. Um, the Oddities. And then I despise the Millionaires Club or whatever it was in, in TNA when it had Luger, Flair, Road Warrior, mm. Animal, um, Steiner, uh, both Steiners. Uh, the Magnificent Seven. The Magnificent Seven is what it was because it yeah. was just so. They were all pompous assholes at that time that just yeah. made a trillion dollars. It, it, you, they couldn't do anything with anybody there. Yeah. So, there you go. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. All right. So, Will from None Your Business. I hope that answered your question. Um. This is from Richard from Ohio. Uh, if you could have one defunct organization and, and bring it back, which organization would you bring back? Um, this one's an easy one for me, Jenks. I've always been an AWA fan. I, I loved that wrestling with Bockwinkle and Henning and Scott Hall, Colonel De Beers and Snooka and all those guys there. Um, yeah. The young stars that they've created with Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. I, I was always an AWA fan. So... AWA, and then if I have to bring one more along, it would be world class. Yeah, uh, I'm going with AWA as well. Similar reasons. I'm staying away from the obvious WCW one because I think, I mean, they had the talent, they just butchered it. But I, I liked AWA. I loved everything they were about, and that was a good, solid foundation to your point. It was a launching point for a lot of bigger for stars once they got into the bigger stages. So I loved AWA. Yeah. So I'll go with that. Yeah. I think you're the first person that's ever agreed with me there. <laughs> um, well, it was, I will say it was hard. Cause I was thinking WCW and I'm like, no, that's just too obvious. And right. uh, yeah. And I want to think outside the box. Cause I, I like those. I like the territorial wrestling at that point in time. And I loved AWA, what they brought to the table. And I enjoyed it when I could watch it on YouTube or wherever I could find it. So the network, I, I don't know if the Peacock has it because I don't dive deep into Peacock because it sucks. Yeah. But, yeah. uh, th when it was the network, they used to have all the AWA stuff on it. I really have not dove into Peacock and I probably won't. I just use it for pay-per-views in the office. I tried watching, I will say this cause I have a yearly tradition as sadistic as it sounds to watch the mankind undertaker match on the day it happened. <laughs> I always watch that Hell in a Cell match, and I always go back to it. Uh, I was there. I to, you were there? Oh, yeah. No I, in the nosebleed section of Pittsburgh. Yeah, but I was there. there. Yeah, I was there. Oh, shit. Yeah. I was not there, but I always go back and watch that, and oh, my God. So trying to find that on the Peacock is absolutely horrible because you have to fast forward it. Almost like you have a VHS tape with ads in it. Because <laughs> nice. you have to fast forward <laughs> and then it will stop you and play an ad before you get to the next, before you get to where you need to go. So it, it's oh, atrocious. That's disgusting. It is. Uh, but yeah, so, oh man. I, someday on Can Crusher's podcast, I want to talk to you about being there live. All right. We won't do it today, but I want to, I want to pick your brain about being there live. Okay. I thought he was dead, just to let you know. Everybody, everybody <laughs> around me also thought he was dead. But we'll get to the I, whole discussion. Yeah. That makes sense. But okay. Uh, two more questions. This one's from Keith okay. from Vermont. And this might be the first question ever from Vermont. So, Keith, thank you. Um, 
Who will be the first person to jump ship from AEW to WWE? Right now, Brian Cage is my thought. I think he's built, although Vince is looking to build his own stars, but I think he's built the way Vince would want him to be, just the way he's been picking people out. I think Brian Cage. After this week at Dynamite, that was exactly my first thought. Yeah. Yeah, or, or AEW in general. That was my first thought. I'm like, man, this guy, um, maybe he's okay in going over on Team Taz or anything. Fine and dandy. He, he's away from that feud maybe now, maybe yeah. not. Um, when does he get his just dues? Because he should be, he should be up there fighting with Mox and Jericho and all those guys for the heavyweight championship. He's a great worker. He really is. For he he moves like Vader and Bam Bam for as big as he is. He looks like, you know, Big Papa Pump or the narcissist Lex Luger, whoever you want to call him. He's got all of it. Yeah, I'm starting to get it now. I- I think a few weeks ago I said I didn't really understand Brian Cage or the level around him, but I'm starting to pick up on it. And I agree. There's got to be – there's something missing. And I don't know what – why they're not pushing him more. I get the whole team pass. They had to settle that rivalry, but there should be more to him than just the FTW title right? or being in there. Um, so – I guess future to come, but uh, I think he could be the first one to jump ship if he doesn't get shown the love that he probably deserves. So we'll have to see. Uh, Keith from Vermont, thank you. And uh, here's the last question that came in as we were recording last week. Um, This is from one of your cohorts. Oh, which one? Cody. Oh, from 40 year old. I thought it was. No. Oh, why is Candy Corn not on the top three? He brought. He really asked that. Yeah. And then after listening to, to this week's show of the Forty Year Dash, um, Jenks, it doesn't belong on the top three. I completely agree. This is this is I, blasphemy. I think I'm giving it a lot of benefit of the doubt when I put it in my top ten. Yeah. Um, I can name ten candies better right now that are in my house. Whoppers, Milk Duds, Fun Dip, Almond Joy, um, Smarties, Nerds, Nerds Ropes. I, I, I mean, come on. It's candy corn. Yeah, it's... it's this is ridiculous. So, I could name five Reese's types that are better than that right off the top of my head, but Right. Trees, pumpkins, eggs, whatever. Footballs. <laughs> Footballs. Anything you can name from Reese's is better than that. And the candy pumpkins are a lot better than candy corn. I agree. That, I will agree with that. So, And they're only good in October. I know they sell them year-round. Yep. Yeah. They only have – and I don't know if it is the best taste because they've sat for years. They're, they can – survive a, a nuclear holocaust. They really that, can. I completely agree with that. Them and Twinkies can survive nuclear holocaust. Yeah. And you have something to eat. I get the, I get, I guess I understand the fetish with eating wax. I don't know. Um, but I, I don't know. I just don't, I don't find it as a top three worthy candy There's, of all time. The, the wax lips that you get in your trick or treat bag. Or the wax candy bottles that you get the, like the the juice out of, yeah, are better wax than a candy corn. Yeah, yeah. So. I don't, I don't, I don't know why my cohorts on the forty year dash are they're assholes. That it is. They're assholes. They, they're completely. I think they're del- delusional uh, and disillusioned. But I will say, uh, we are recording on Halloween and we are debating this during uh, the Moochie Update episode. So, preparing an argument oh. for it. And, yeah, he, so. and he has to have the Godfather watched by then. He does. He has to have it watched by then, and he has to be prepared to debate me on candy corn. Nice. So Nice. We have a jam-packed episode for Halloween. I'm excited for that one. 
I'm excited <laughs> for that one. <laughs> All right, Jenks, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back. And uh, essentially this week in wrestling was this week in wrestling. Uh, yeah. We can dive in a little bit about the draft. We can talk about AEW. We don't have to deep dive about anything because it all forward storylines. There was yeah. nothing new besides old stuff. Right. So uh, we're going to be back right after you hear from Al Snow and Call Her an Elbow. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow. The wrestling brand. This is the air apparent Chris LaRusso, and you're listening to the Can Crushers podcast. And welcome back to Can Crushers. Guys, don't forget you just heard from Al Snow at Collar and Elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all that great stuff that he has. Wonderful merch, and you can use the promo code Can Crushers, all one word. Capital C and can, capital C and crushers. You'll save 10%. But uh, you can also buy our merch too. Head over to our Facebook page or our website. Uh, you guys can find that on all our socials. Buy some of our amazing can crusher merch as well. I think this is going to lead to you guys having some 40 year old dash merch as well, Jenks. I think so too. Uh, going to get it produced here. I got to talk to the cohorts, but. Hopefully without candy corn anywhere on it. We'll see what happens, though. Yeah. Uh, how about we break down the week, actually? Uh, I was going to say phonetically, but that's not the word because phonetically means <laughs> words. Um, in order, Jenks. This uh, way we can, since we touched on the draft last time we were on the air, let's go right to Monday night and talk about the draft first off. And I don't have the extra picks so if you want to pull those up of what they did on Talking Raw or Raw Talk or your mama yeah. Talking Raw, cool. But the main ones from Raw, um, and congratulations, sir. You are clearly going to be head and shoulders here on Can Crushers because you got that right 100%. You said Charlotte was going to SmackDown and Becky was coming to Raw. It happened. It, it, it just it, it had that feeling that they were going to do it. Um, now I'm guessing I don't think I saw the title swap. Happen. That didn't happen yet. Yeah, but I'm thinking they're going to wait till after Crown Jewel because I think if I read somewhere, the it's going to be in effect after Crown Jewel happens. Y- yes, the draft. Yeah, so I think we'll see that afterwards. But yeah, I it just had that feeling that they were going to swap the women's champions and put Becky on Raw and let her run the show. Yeah. Nope. Bailey, Bailey might agree. I don't know. Well, she's mad she wasn't drafted. Well, agreed. But uh, what her namesake is a uh, free agent now. So, right. See what happens there. See where I, I would imagine with who went to where. Um, let's stay with Raw. Let's just break down yeah. Raw. Yeah. Lashley stay in there. Of course, Seth is coming over because it only makes yeah. sense. Uh, Damian Priest, AJ and Omis, KO, The Prophets, because. Bianca is now on Raw. Carrie yep. and Cross, Finn Balor, Alexa Bliss, Carmella, which I'm happy with because I think Carmella can shine actually on Raw, uh, especially when we get to talking what happened on SmackDown. Um, and then Gabe Stevenson. Stevenson. I, I did the same thing yeah. that uh, Saxton did. You want to put the N in yeah. Stevenson? Yeah. I did it too. Don't worry about it. I, I was kind of, I was kind of surprised by that, the Gable one, um, just because he's newer to the program. But I, I get it. They're gonna boost him up, and that's Olympic gold medalist. So they want to put him right on the main, on the flag. Well, what has been known as a flagship show. So, he's the new Kurt Angle. Let's yeah, exactly. let's just dun, 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 dun. yeah. That's he's coming out with that. Yeah. Does this yeah. bring Angle back? 
Yeah, it would be interesting if it does. I don't think they do a father son storyline with him like they've done with Jason <laughs> Gordon, which I'm still pissed about. But that's a different story for a different day. Uh, but I, it might bring Gabe or uh, Angle back to do like a passing of the torch or a mentorship type thing. That would be kind of cool, I think. Does he align but, with the Alpha Academy? Because they're also on Raw. I, I think they try, but I could also see them being the first victims. Victims line up. Yeah. Uh, whether it's Otis, I think it'd be Chad Gable first that would get the first match against them and then Otis. But yeah, I think I think it puts them in it on the opposite side of the ring with the guy, the uh, academy. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. Uh, SmackDown drafts, and I'm going to save the big one for last because I have some words to say about it. Sasha staying, Shinsuke and your stupid ass buddy Boogs is staying. <laughs> Sheamus goes over. Shayna. Uh, Zia Lee, I-, I like that she got the call up. The Viking Raiders, yep. Ricochet, Garza and Carrillo, which I hate that tag team. Cesaro, Sami Zayn, I love the Ridge Hall on call up. Mm-hmm. And of course, the Usos stay with the Bloodline. So yeah. uh, we'll talk about all of them here in a second. But my big beef is this this was a storyline from last Friday coming over to Monday. Why are the Usos the first pick then? It, 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 they didn't need to be there then. Paul didn't do anything to make me believe that he actually got them to go first. They shouldn't have yeah. been pay- picked in the first round. They, they shouldn't have even been seen on TV for the first hour. Make it think that, oh my God, SmackDown didn't take the Usos first. Yeah. Are they... Bl- Nope, they take them and then there's the fucking storyline done. Why? Yeah. The only thing I can think of is, you know, looking at the list of who was drafted, they didn't have a marquee player to put above them outside of Sasha. Or, you know, I I just, it didn't seem like there's that big name no. that they were going to put on on SmackDown. Agreed. And that's the only reason why the Usos were the first pick out, out the gate with them. It, all right, then take Sasha first, and yeah. then during the draft, have Paul come out and punch Pierce or something to say, we're taking the, oh, something. This was supposed to, to me, this was a big story coming over. Are the Usos going to get drafted? Oh, my God, they're going to be on Raw. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, we're taking the Usos. Paul didn't talk to us or nothing. Yeah, we're taking the Usos, no problem. I think it's an example of a lot of things that have, they have made me question over the past however many weeks or what's what's the creative thinking behind this and why are you doing it this way? Yeah. Um, I I think that just, it just adds to it. So another thing I want to talk about from raw uh, and it is Corey Graves. This was I am glad, uh, and I think it was scripted because Dana then sent comments back. Um, yeah. Corey Graves buries Dana Brooke, and yeah. he's not wrong. He's That's not. all I have to say. I am waving the Corey Graves flag. He's I, not I, wrong. I got to agree. Um, yeah, I, it seems like it was scripted. That's fine. She's not wrong. She just hasn't. And maybe this is for a push for her to go. Uh, I don't know. But she just been kind of treading water and not really doing much with it. And honestly, I haven't never been a big Dana Brooke fan. And that's why you've seen her get who's Austin three seconds in the past or things of that nature. This, this was right on point. And it pretty much said what a lot of people were thinking at that point in time. My thoughts are, though... Um... Dana didn't get injured on Monday night because yeah. Dewdrop of all people comes out to save her. Okay. Right. So there's another match coming up, Dana and Shayna for the Queen's crown. Uh Dewdrop's yeah. taking on somebody in the same bracket. So right. are we gonna get Dana upsetting Shayna? And then at the end, is it gonna be Carmella against Dana? And Graves actually causes because 
Jenks, I, I, I want to see Carmelo win this Queen's Crown. Okay. Since Flair's I'm, not in it, we thought maybe they were going to – no disrespect to who's in it, but we thought maybe there'd yeah. be some bigger names like Charlotte in it or, you know, Sasha is in the storyline, but uh, is she going to get a title? I don't know. You know, I thought maybe somebody big like that was going to be in it. Th- this is looking like Carmella could win. She beat Liv Morgan, who I thought was going to win. <laughs> I thought that too, and I was a little, I was a little taken back by that. Uh, I don't know because this seems like it has a run, run the table type aspect. It's built for the Queen of Spades to take it, unless Nia comes back in the finals. But she has, I think it's a legitimate injury, or they're just giving her time off to work on herself. Um, and by herself, I mean her wrestling ability. <sighs> I want to say Carmilla could take it now that she's beaten Liv, but I'm really thinking this is Shayna Baszler's to run just through competition and just become the official queen. See, I, I, I thought that, but they're starting something with Dewdrop in her, which yeah, pisses me off because Shayna should be attacking Flair or um, Becky or or both tag team partners or whoever I don't think Shayna needs this to stay irrelevant because I think Shayna is on the upward climb of becoming one of the next champions um, in 2022 Uh, I'll say it that way in 2022 I think Shayna will be a WWE champion Um, okay I, I don't think the Queen's crown is the way for her to get there. I think she needs to be uh, crazy-ass um, Ken Shamrock to rip through the, you know, beating people up and just dismantling them. I think the crown what? makes it something different then for her. Because usually you don't see <clears throat> the Queen of the Ring or the King of the Ring back in then. They get a title shot, but they don't win it. W- when did somebody have both? Yeah. Well, outside of Lesnar. Right. But, um, but see, you say Ken Shamrock, he did win the King of the Ring. He they did. did. give that to him. And I think they, so they put Shayna in that predicament for so many months where she didn't look like that perennial badass. She was taking roll-ups pinfall she was taking losses for her team and then recently she just turned into this complete and utter machine monster mix that we all know her to be and we even talked about it i think it was last week where we mentioned about or a couple weeks ago where she had really lost her luster when she became the vampire at some point right and i think her stomping through the competition it sets up perfectly for her versus new drop in the semifinals. And I think that could be where they build up to. I think this is just putting Shayna over as that monster. She runs through the tournament field, and it's a queen versus queen matchup on SmackDown, if you think about it that way. Because at some point, Charlotte will have to come across. I believe Shayna was drafted to SmackDown. Right. So Charlotte's going to have to come across the queen of spades, and I think that's where Shayna takes the title. I think that's who beat Charlotte for the title at some point. So essentially, we're both saying um, it's going to be Carmella against Shayna Baszler in the finals. Yeah, I don't see Zelina Vega winning it. I don't getting either. to the. I, I was kind of surprised she beat Tony Storm. I thought they would set up Tony Storm versus Liv Morgan, but I get why. I guess I can understand why Carmella beat Liv, being a former champion. It kind of does that fifty-fifty booking between the two as well, but. Uh, I think I think Carmella is a more legitimate reason to put over Shayna if she beats her. More legitimate opponent to put over Shayna. I'll give you that. You might have just changed my mind. You might have just changed my mind. Yeah. Damn it. But I think one of them needs to come to Raw. Uh, essentially, we're gi- then we're both giving SmackDown the Queen's crown. Yeah. If it goes to Baszler. <clears throat> the coffee is not setting well. And I'm drinking coffee today. <laughs> Because, 
Yeah. Uh, the guys, it, we're going to bounce back and forth here on WWE. On SmackDown, then, we had the uh, the King of the Ring. Um, who was it? Uh, it was Finn Sammy against Cesaro. versus Ray. Yeah. yeah, and Sammy versus Ray. Who do you think's winning the King of the Ring? Uh, give me one second. I'm pulling it up. Because I don't think... Well, honestly, my first gut reaction was maybe it would be Sammy. But honestly, here's I think Kofi wins it. And my thought behind that is I think at some point we see a breakup of the New Day. And it's going to be Kofi versus Xavier in the semifinals. Kofi's going to beat Xavier. And then if Kofi becomes the king, Xavier has been petitioning for five years or however long, two years or whatever, whenever Corbin won it, has been petitioning for the King of the Ring tournament to come back. Kofi beats Xavier and then becomes King of the Ring. Do you don't think Xavier's going to get jealous or be like a little out of sorts here? Maybe I've overthought this, but I think Kofi wins it and I think it starts to break the, there's a dissension in the New Day at that point. And I think that's been coming for a while. Um, yeah. Because there's been leaks that, you know, this faction uh, has been running the gamut at WWE for a while, and they have been. So I, I'd right. be all right with that. Um, I would go the other way, though, that okay. Woods actually gets it. And no oh, okay. disrespect because um, you had Kofi win the title, you have Big E as champion, uh, yeah. just as a pat on the back. Um, that you guys have carried us for a while, and you're pandering to get this tournament back. Let's give it to uh, the Xavier. Why not? Yeah. He's got to be out of the doghouse of posting videos of doing page by now, right? Right. You right. would think. You would think. Um, and on the other side, I think it's Finn the whole way because that solidifies he's a prince. And he's been the first ever universal championship yeah. holder. So whoever wins from that side, because and no disrespect to Cesaro, Cesaro's been a middle of the pack type of guy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that side of the bracket is just building for Finn to take it. I, if Finn doesn't win this, it's by hook or by crook, especially with Sami Zayn in the next round. But right. yeah, I, I really don't see anything standing in Finn Balor's way. Um, but I, I could see your point about Xavier too. And to that point, maybe Xavier goes a little over the top about it. You know, you could be Kofi. I really just think it's going to be Kofi and Xavier in the semifinals. Just the way they did that, that it doesn't make sense for Jinder Mahal or Ricochet in that matchup. Uh, I think they did that for a reason and it's going to come apart here in the, over the next several months. And all finals will take place at crown jewel. So yep. that's cool. Um, a little bit of shade. I guess I wouldn't mind if, if Jinder does win it because I, I've i always been a Jinder fan because I think he's such a great throwback heel character. Uh, I okay. do. And I, I think he could be um, a dastardly. The, the word, that word. We haven't used it a lot. A dastardly king ruling with, you know, whatever. And his group is actually broken up now, too. As yeah. um, one of them went to Raw uh, and one of them went to SmackDown. So it's just Jinder and I think Shanky is with him. I, nor do I care. Essentially, let's leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I was going to say, I think it's Shanky or Zvir, one of the two. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, Shanky's on SmackDown, Veer's on Raw now so at the end of smackdown we get seth and edge edge calls out well seth calls out edge edge does come out and me being stupid um so they're calling for a hell in a cell match yeah holy fuck normally hell in a cell matches take place in the united states this is going to the crown jewel how are they getting the hell in a cell to saudi arabia they're clearly no not idea. building one over there. They're bringing yeah. one that they've had pre-built and everything. Imagine that, because normally they just truck them. You know, they're in a yep. truck. They truck them to Providence or Pittsburgh or wherever. How did you send this to Saudi Arabia? 
I have no idea. Uh, obviously, the prince is footing the bill there because that's the only way that thing's getting over there. Oh, oh my God. Ship? Is that yeah. how you send it? I, I don't know. How do you send that? To, I guess you're asking the question, and I have no goddamn clue. Mm. That was the first thing I thought of. I'm I'm not that I'm excited to see this match. It it could be a great match. It really could be. I'm just like, how they, how the hell they getting that there? Or are we going to get a generic Punjabi one? Don't don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to get bamboo sticks and great Holly comes out at the end and throws them off the side. That that wouldn't uh, surprise me on a Saudi one, though. By the way, no, it won. It won. So that well, that could be how gender wins the match. Wins the final. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, anything else on WWE that you'd like to talk about before we transition over to some AEW talk? No, uh, I did want to just mention one quick thing. I'm disappointed they broke up. Knox and Blackheart they're oh, like a tag title shot but yes. a, what the hell but I guess that's one way to solve a problem in WWE is just break them up so they'll get a title shot so that was the only other thing I was going to bring up yes but, that the, that was actually written down in my notes uh, low at the uh, bottom of the thing I'm like ah oh, because that actually took place that was one that actually took place on Raw Talk or whatever right yeah yeah, that was one of the ones. Yeah, and that I was looking at that. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me! But I mean, it seemed like a tag team they just threw together to begin with. But I thought it worked pretty well. Um, but it is what it is, I guess. But yeah, and I'm a they, disappointed by that. They ended up breaking up the former tag team champions in as well. Nat went to yeah. one in Tamina. So there is essentially no tag teams besides the champions right now. Yeah. Exactly, I can't. I could not name a woman's tag team. There isn't, Jenks. There, there isn't. The Iconics are the inspiration now, heading to Impact at Bound for yeah. Glory. Um, the Riot Squad. Uh, one has had a baby. One is in AEW, and uh, uh, Liv Morgan just got buried by Carmella. Yep. Um. Yeah. That was it. I mean, that was it. NXT doesn't even have. No, because tag. Candace I mean, is pregnant tag. and Indy's married. Yeah, and I think they have Toxic Attraction, I think it's their name. That's the lone tag team I can think of besides EO and Zoe. Yeah. They broke up the Robert Brand Stone, uh, Robert yeah. Stone brand, I mean, because Aaliyah's coming up. Yeah. She already turned on him a while ago, too. Right. And, yeah, there's nobody left. I, I don't understand why you would break. This goes back to they're not liking tag teams, I think. They just break up tag teams for the hell of it at that point. And it's just like, well, we don't respect tag team wrestling, so screw it. Screw it. We'll figure it out. Win. We'll throw two people together and they can win the tag titles. Win, though. So the, 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 they're just going to defend against... Um... The air quote local stars for a while. Yeah. Well, uh, you know what? Uh, they're not on the same brand, I don't think. Uh, I was going to say Carmella and uh, Selena, but they're not on the same brand anymore, are they? No. I cannot remember. Yeah. I was going to say, well, they had some sort of tag team or alliance at one point, but that's not going to happen anymore. So. so we have a women's tag team championship. We have champions that don't go together because one's a superstar and one's a rock star uh, monster. Yeah. And we have nobody to defend them against. It makes sense. Perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. All the sense in the world. Perfect sense. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see that championship go away um, sooner than later. I agree. And that's sad. Yeah. I I think they could have done a lot of good things with that, but yeah, it's sad. All right, AEW time here on Can Crusher Nation. And Jinx, um, I want to go to Rampage right off the bat, and then we'll come back to Dynamite. (sighs) A weak show again on Rampage for me. I I really... uh, And I'll start with the Punk match. Um, First of all, the goddamn pants are back. I was pissed about that. (laughs) I knew you were going to be pissed about that. I, I actually wrote that down as the first thing you were going to bitch about. Good. So. 
I love seeing the um, Punk work with the youngsters. I really do. But this is his third match, and can we get him to look solid once? And I'm not saying that they're building him up like that, but he needs to destroy one person. There's got to be one person. I want one person where he just comes in, beats the snot out of him, go to sleep, and puts him in the clutch, and then done. But this was a good match. It it didn't need to be this week, but I'm just saying at some point we need a quick punk match just to show that he's back. Yeah, and I think they're building it. I think it'll build up to that. I, I like how they're doing it right now because it, it's getting him, hey, he's getting acclimated to the ring. If he came right in and just destroyed, I'm not saying he would have or they would have did this to Darby Allen, but if he just came in and destroyed him as his first opponent, I think it would have been they're forcing it upon us that Punk is that good. Right. No, I'm like not saying Darby or even Hobbs yeah, because yeah. he was bigger. I was expecting it in this match, actually, just because Daniel Garcia oh, okay. and 2.0 are a joke. Well, they've been pushing Daniel Garcia a lot in 2.0 or the Nasty Boys uh, <laughs> little brothers. Can I – I popped for that. I did too. I, did I was dying because I thought when they first debuted those stupid vests, I thought the same thing. But um, uh, I like Daniel Garcia as a wrestler. I think he's a good talent. He's a younger guy right now, and he's having a lot of phenomenal matches. I think he had four matches in a row this weekend against some – very big name. Uh, big name guy, and that says a lot for his talent level, I think. So I I like this match. I thought it was a great, it was a good match. I won't say great. It was a good match. It made sense. I get your point. I think I don't know if it's an AEW talent or they get some local guy for him to squash. I think it has to be a AEW talent. And I'm gonna be honest and go back to Wednesday. I don't know what they have planned for Bobby Fish, but I feel like it's not going to be that high on the card. I don't either. So maybe it's a Bobby Fish destruction that they throw out there. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I But I like the approach that they're taking that he's not automatically just destroying people when he gets out there. Right. right. And I wasn't like, again, I wasn't saying to do yeah. that against Darby or Hobbs right. because I think those are two big players in the, in the future of AEW Uh, Garcia as well. I I like where they're going, but next match because our Leo um, wants to book a match against punk next week to see if he is worth it. And it's against uh, who the hell was it against? Uh, One of the stable men. I can't remember who's in this group now. Yeah. But maybe that one, you know, punk just comes out. Boom. Leo, you guys suck. And it starts a fight between the other stable men and the other stable men to get dumb guys going or whatever. As long as Leo Rush doesn't turn into the guy that with a microphone and starts screaming again, I could get behind what Leo Rush is trying to do. Yeah. But if he's the whole hype man for Bobby Lashley again, Leo Rush is going to lose a lot of people once again. Yeah. Um, he, has to, he has to carry himself. Yeah. He can't be the mouthpiece. I God. No, um, I've never been an Acclaim fan, so I was pumped to see the Luchas pretty much take care of them easily. Yeah, and, and we we know that they weren't losing the titles um, this early. Uh, Santana right. and Ortiz have not been around again, so I'm telling you, that's who's going to be the next to win it, folks. Mark it down that they're going to have a mega match. You're you're probably still wanting it to be FTR, don't you? I would love it to be FTR, but I I'm starting to agree with you. I think it's Santana and Ortiz. It, it's the only one that makes sense right now. I think that's how you build it up. Yeah. So I think they've started the road for Santana and Ortiz to take it off of them. Uh, I would love FTR to win the title at any point in time, but they're not set up to do that right now right. at this point in time. So uh, we kind of saw the finals of the TBS Championship. Um, break down in the next match after Jade destroys Sky Blue. Uh, I think this is going to be your finals. I think it's going to be Thunder against Jade for the TBS yeah. championship. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'm wondering, they're probably going to put it on Jade, to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, I, unless Thunder is going to cheat the win, I don't think Thunder is going to be the one to put the first loss on Jade. So, And maybe that's how they escape it, being Jade taking it off of Brick. 
and having that undefeated champion, they just put her on the TBS championship and be undefeated with that. I, yeah. That could be it. Uh, I think so. Um, and I don't know if Britt came on on Dynamite, and I mean, we're going to kind of conglomerate these together a little bit, and, and said, oh, good, you dumb bitches essentially can fight over this new championship that means nothing. Um, it is the secondary title. In yeah. AEW, let let's throw that out there. It is the secondary women's championship in AEW because you can Thunder can lose this tournament, but still look great because she's had that match against Britt. Or you can have you know Nyla bounce back, or you know there can be players involved, and Jade could run with this TBS championship as long as she wanted. I'm okay with that. Because it's the secondary championship, I yeah. just don't, I think she's too young in the career to carry the division like Britt is, or Thunder could, or even Nilo with Vicky Guerrero could. Yeah, no, I agree with that one hundred percent. Yeah, there's not much to say outside of that. I, I completely agree with that. If they give it to Jade and let her run, maybe it's for six months or something. I think there could be a setup for a title versus title match or even just she wants to outgrow the TBS title and go to the women's title but right. it's down the road. I think that could be a case, too, where she vacates and says, I want the big title, which we could see. Yeah. Or she gets too cocky and she says, "I've yeah, like you said, I, I've outgrown this and I'm still undefeated. Now I want to take on Brit. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, and then Starks against Brian Cage in a Philly street fight. I love that they were in Philadelphia. They gave a little props to ECW. I mean, they used only stuff that ECW used, garbage cans and all that stuff. Um, and at one point, I thought Cage was going to win it back. I thought, okay, they're, they're going to do this title swap thing. And it makes sense here because Ricky Starks is so great on the mic to want to come back and get this, or maybe Hobbs gets this title down the line, or Hook, because they're doing more with Hook. But then essentially what we said at that question at the beginning of the show, does that hurt Brian Cage that he lost? I don't know if it hurts Cage here. I want him to do more at Cage. I've gotten to that point where I want him to do more at Cage, but this is what I expected to happen. I figured Team Taz was going to get involved at some capacity. Um, and I don't know. I, I just wasn't impressed by it, I guess. I, it wasn't – I usually go for these street fight type matches. Um, I like a little bit of this cash cans and weapons to be used, but it, it, it seemed like it was a traditional match. It was basically your basic Team Taz match just with weapons involved to me. I wasn't over the top with it. No, I I agree. I, I wasn't over yeah. the top. I wasn't at all. All right, let's uh, head over to Dynamite or revert back to Dynamite. Uh, huge match to start. It was the Super Click Elite or whatever the hell they're calling themselves against the Jurassic Express, Christian Cage, and Brian Danielson. Um, I'm glad the crowd kept up with No Balls Kenny. Yeah, yeah, they, they're holding on to it. They Which are. Makes sense. Philly crowd is a uh, ruthless sometimes, so you figured they would. <laughs> And I was pumped that the Super Click Elite got the win because we've seen it back and forth. And I don't want, as much as a loss isn't going to hurt um, Adam Cole or any of them, I don't want them to see piles upon piles upon piles of losses coming up to just Jurassic Express, Christian Cage, and Brian Danielson. So them getting the win was, I, I think, great booking. Yeah, it's a great example of not using 50-50 booking, which has been has become the norm in some areas of wrestling, where you see, well, we have to trade wins because this team won and this team won. If I'm going to believe this is a super elite, which I already do, and I did, and I don't need to see them win, they have to win to continue to be cocky. It doesn't make sense for them to be cocky and then they lose, right? Right. So I, I think it, it only made sense for them to beat a team that, was more or less put together, thrown together, like Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and Daniel, Brian Danielson. I almost said Daniel Bryan again. Uh, Sorry. But, no, it's all good. Uh, 
But I also did like I, I love the triple super kick at the end. Yes. On Danielson and then the four person BTE trigger. I thought that was a great great ending to the match on how they booked that. Agreed. Um, jumping around, I, I loved Arn burning Cody's stuff. <laughs> I did too. And that then the great. slap, because I think the slap was harder than Cody thought, but it was yeah. genuine because it was just like, yep. stop being a bitch or whatever he said. Wham! And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that was, Ar- I love this Arn Anderson. Where's I do too. Been? Yeah. Let's keep him going every week. I don't need to see anything else. So it's interesting, and I like that they didn't make it that he turned on the Nightmare family, but he's trying to prove a point with Cody Rhodes to get him into a better position to be in. And this is a great uh, start to it. Yes. And, uh, God, give me this Arn Anderson every week. Stop please. being a bitch. Please. Stop being a bitch. Bam. Uh, you brought up Bobby Fish. Bobby looked good against yeah. Sammy. He did, but yep. this was Sammy's first defense. Come on. I'm glad Bobby is here because Bobby's got a lot of friends in this division. Shit, his uh, his his buddy Adam Cole from Undisputed Era uh, yeah. is, is essentially right there, and he grew up in ROH with the Young Bucks and all of that. This is the right place for him, but I yep. don't see, uh, like you said, he's not. I don't think he's going to get that mega push. Yeah, I don't think so either. He, maybe someday he does come down the line and get the TNT championship at some point. Uh, I just want to see them build him up because he kind of got done dirty with the whole breakup of the Undisputed Era thing in NXT. He didn't really have much going on after that. I think he might have been injured at one point. I was going to say, he was on the it, shelf it, essentially it, yeah, when they broke up. Yeah, so it, it kind of got the raw end of the deal whether it was supposed to happen or not with it. So I want to see them build him back up and I could see him getting a TNT title at some point down the line. It wasn't going to be tonight, but I think they just need to build them back up to what we know him to be. Um, so. uh, I'm going to skip ahead and then we can come back and talk about whatever you want to. Um, what other network championship would you want? Because Britt wants to see the cartoon network championship. You know, that was, that was a great touch by cartoon network. Let's uh, let's get HGTV in there. I think you could do uh nice, maybe not a housekeeping match like they had with China and Jeff Jarrett a long time ago, but some sort of, uh, I would love to see a couple, maybe the property brothers face off against somebody. Uh, trying to think maybe, uh, what is that? Fixer upper crew. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. Maybe you just have that tag team match at some point for the tag HGTV titles, but I was uh, I was going ID because then you oh. can have like Nick Gage and maybe Homicide or this is uh, one that oh, Moxley would want because it's just about killing. <laughs> it is. That's it. And maybe it's an A and E title. So yeah. then you can get the first forty eight and you just turn them together at that point. Right. Uh, <laughs> um then we get the Casino Battle Royal ladder match, whatever the hell they called it. Um, yeah. People win this. Orange Cassidy, Pac, Andrade, Mox, Hardy, Archer, and then the Joker was Hangman. Um, yep. Holy shit, the power bomb uh, from Andrade off of the power, off of the ladder. That yeah. fucking blew my mind. But my biggest pop was uh, when Hangman comes out, it says, he finally showed up for work. <laughs> <laughs> that was mine, too. I was dying when I saw it. That, as soon as he came out, I'm like, oh, first of all, he yelled cowboy shit. Second of all, I'm like, what are they What are they going to put as this tagline? And when he said he finally showed up for work, I, I lost it. That was a fantastic touch to that. Although, did you, holy shit, when he did the... Get eye off the damn ladder. Yeah, I did. Oh. I really did. Like this was a for these guys being in this. Uh, this was brutal. There was yeah. a lot of bumps that I'm like, holy fuck, guys! This is just on cable TV. Why are you killing yourself this much? They didn't care. They were gonna go for it. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I was still real from that dead eye, and then. I thought it was a little wonky at the end when Mox just kind of fell off the ladder without getting punched. It was just it seemed like he maybe got staggered and then fell off, but I thought that was a little bit of a wonky end to it. But it made sense. Uh, 
and I don't know if they had the right ladder because Hangman looked a little sketch when he was on like yeah. the third to the top rung. He's like, oh shit, I might have the wrong ladder because he had to climb up one more and he's holding on and trust me, I'm not climbing a ladder like that. So I, I don't hate you, <laughs> Hangman, because I... And he's like trying to swing this, but he's like, I don't want to be up this goddamn high because I'm on the top of the ladder and I've seen these things just crumble to the ground. Yeah, it worked. Uh, it, it did. And maybe that's why Mox fell off because they're like, we have a goddamn wrong ladder. This yep. is not going to work. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that was, they tried to kill each other, to your point, on cable TV. And I loved every minute of it. So I did. Kudos to them. And that that's all I got really from AEW. Well, Anna J kind of barked up a little yeah. bit at the end when the Dark Order. So was that our our reference? Who is going to lead the Dark Order here? It could be, and I kind of thought it was going to be Anna J. It was going to be that more the authority figure at this point because I think she could lead. That was the only one kind of set up to lead the team, in my opinion, because everybody seemed to follow her on you know the elite and all of that stuff usually when she talks so i i could see energy leading yeah i could too um i'll tell you this right now jenks i am not watching into the first commercial break of roads to the top first of all i don't watch dynamite live guys yeah it's too late for my but i'm not taping roads to the top to watch the next part they're going to do this every week which pisses me off the they're going to talk to somebody stop trying to get the viewerships to a show that wrestling fans do not want to watch. I'll put it at that. Or or did you watch it? I gave it five minutes and turned it off because I'm like, this is not, this is not what I want to see. I'm not as big on reality TV to begin with. So this is kind of just like, it's not worth watching to get to an interview that you could probably find on YouTube at some point. The next day, the next day it'll be on YouTube. So uh, yeah, I didn't watch it. So, but uh, I agree with you. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about before we head to the third uh, segment? We can jump to the third segment. I just want to mention I love that they did not give Sheeta the fiftieth win to Deeb. I thought that was a nice little hold off for it, and then she got attacked afterwards. So I like where this is going because it seemed like a foregone co- conclusion when they showed the uh, class plaque at the beginning of it. So I'm kind of glad they didn't do that. And I don't think she's going to get it anytime soon. No, I think she's going to be chasing it. I think she's going to be chasing it for a while. It it gives her, she doesn't need to be around her title right now. It gives her something to do. Mm -hmm. Um, Deeb is turned and is a badass. But I think you see Sheeta getting some random losses to uh, people you wouldn't expect because she's only worried about that 50 wins. Yep. You know, have it be on elevation or something. I mean, no disrespect to maybe Sky Blue or our homegirl that was on last week, Maddie Rinkowski, somebody like that. Maybe you see uh, Ray Lynn head back to AEW, and she just got to go back to the the boards to figure out what she's really doing, not worried about this 50th win. Exactly. She's going to be focused on too much. I like that's kind of where my head too, went to. She's going to be too focused on the 50th win and she's going to cost herself a couple times. Yeah. She gets it. We got this. We can book shit. Yeah, we got this. We know what we're doing. I mean, I called the draft last week, so you did. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a literally a, a quick break. We'll be right back. Wrap this show up with uh, some final thoughts here on can crushers podcast. Yo, it's Johnny patch. The American daredevil. The, Super Indie Champion, and you're listening to Can Crusher's Podcast. Oh, welcome back, Can Crusher Nation, to the podcast. Wow. I you, tried to do Big E there. You, uh, were you swerving your hips? I was. I was trying Mike to get it. Mike Jenks rocks. Mike Jenks rocks. Uh, you just heard from Johnny Patch, uh, former IWC Super Indian Champion. Not Indian. Indie champion uh this coming saturday check out the iwc network it is super indie 20 um hopefully that's what i want to do jenks uh we'll be just leaving celeb fest you know i'll have my computer with me um down at pat's house we should just throw super indie on 
his old TV down there and watch that. Um, the IWC Network, only nine ninety nine a month. You get 20 years of their history. You can see the likes of Wardlow and Britt and early CM Punk, and the list can go on and on and on. Elias, and yeah, everybody that's ever come through IWC is on that network. And this coming Saturday is Super Indie 20. Check out the card. It's pretty flippin' amazing. So, yeah. Very nice. Yep. Very, very nice. Very so, nice. Uh, hey, Mark, real hey. quick, what's in the coffee? Uh, oh, I'm look. You've been having a rough day this morning. Here. I have been. Uh, <laughs> I, again, I did this uh, sleeping in thing because both yeah. uh, other humans in this house are at work. So I love ah. when this is mean. Again, it's at the end of the show, so they won't listen this long. I love when they're up and about Sundays and out the door because me and the birthday boy and the big man, we went back to sleep until about nine o'clock. I text you the rundown, yeah. and then I went back to sleep. I I was impressed you texted me at eight o'clock this morning with the rundown. Yeah, I was uh, fair enough. Hey, you know what? Get your sleep in, man. I am. I wish I could have. I it, woke up at five thirty again. You're retarded. <laughs> Stupid. Why? No, it's because Did... I trained my dog to wake me up. Oh, wow. Well, I true. somehow I somehow trained Bailey to wake me up. So sure enough, she got me up and she was just sitting there like, take me outside. Wake up, you lazy piece of shit. And that was about it. <laughs> you I did. Up and I had to wake up. So yeah all right uh it is actually just french vanilla uh, it's a uh, timmy hose coffee mm-hmm. with uh french vanilla that's it oh yeah get the, got the fancy coffee today well i do have the fancy it, and it's october so i do enjoy i'm not a coffee drinker in the summer but okay once it's sweatshirt and shorts weather which is my favorite type of i would wear sweatshirts and shorts my entire life if i could it's yeah. the, it's the best balance. Um, mm-hmm. I'm walking in the garbage, so my legs are always warm. I, I got the, the upper body, maybe a little chilly. Yeah, uh, perfect weather for me for fat guys, right? Oh, you know it. That's my weather. <laughs> this is my weather, man. This is. Great. I've been so I've been for the past month. It's been a debate at work between me and this other gentleman. Uh, he's more physically fit than I am, but. He and I just love fall and the summer people are trying to hold on to every last bit of summer. And we've been pushing fall for the past month since September 1st. Yep. We're like it's hoodie weather. It's jeans weather. I don't care what you say. I'm miserable on 70 degree, 78 degree weather days. Cause it feels too hot out. Cause I want just hoodies, jeans, short hoodies and shorts, hoodies and jeans. I don't care what it is right now. I have a cutoff and jeans on. So that just tells you where my mindset's at. I flipped it. I, I went with the cutoffs up top. You're you're moxleying it up. I'm moxleying it up. Oh, oh, that was the other thing for the merch store. I thought I would see a cutoff on there. I I didn't see any cutoffs because I clearly yeah. would wear a cutoff of my own yeah. product. Yeah. Yep. That's what. That's why I was a little shocked they went on there. But that's fair. If you didn't see them, then that makes sense. Yeah, so. the tank tops on there, but I don't pull tank yeah. tops off well. I don't either. Yeah. There's a lot of things hanging out that nobody needs to see. So right. Uh, real quick, uh, I want to touch on the last two weeks of Dark Side of the Ring. Um, neither one was for me. I'll put it that way. Uh, one was all the exploding Japanese, Chinese matches, and then this past week was Johnny K-9. Uh, nah. There's been better, there's been worse. Yeah, I mean, I told you before the show, I didn't watch the Johnny K-9 one this week. Just scheduled and allow it. But the uh, exploding death match one, I, there's been better. I understand this. And it just seems, I think it further puts in my mind that Japan is more welcoming to wrestling as a culture. So they have different genres that they can have. This was one of the genres because you see they have, you know, New Japan, they have the comedy stuff. This was a taste in the 90s was for this blood and guts type of entertainment. It's not my thing. I don't want to see people exploding or have these pool matches with exploding whatever the hell they had going on there. But, uh, yeah, it, it they were okay. Uh, the one was okay. Again, like I said, I didn't watch the Johnny K-9 one, so I can't really have an opinion on that. But They um, gave – the Johnny K-9 one to me is they, they told us everything that we we knew. And, you know, the dark side yeah. of the rings – 
I always expect them to get a little bit dirtier and in maybe behind the scenes. And it was just like, yeah, uh, he did this. He he yeah. he he was he did this, and he. But tell us, what yeah. did he do? Was he? I mean, yeah, all right. So he was in Satan's Club, or and he was in this, or he was maybe involved in a murder. They they bounced around stuff more than you know true confessions of uh, a killer. Yeah, this is a wrestling fan. We want to know the down and dirty. Did he when he was doing this? Did he snort cook? Well, he led three different lives, and you have Scott Demore, and you have some wrestlers come on, and you have his wife um, saying, "But he was really a nice guy. We didn't see that." Give me one of the assholes then that says, "Yeah, yeah. this son of a bitch was snorting coke and doing this outside." It was supposed to make Johnny Canine look like the devil. You had no backing. You yeah. had one guy that rode in the bike with him and he said, I would have told him not to do this. And that was his most poignant line. The whole hour show. I would have told him not to do this. Go be a teacher. Go wrestle or something. Live that dream. All right. So eh, we'll see what happens this week on Dark Side. I still love them. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I, I love yeah. everything about them, but. Yeah, yeah I, I love I love the concept. I mean, it just wasn't the strongest episodes to me. Right. Or this one wasn't. Yeah. So. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, eh, we uh, we're heading to Baltimore this this coming Saturday again. IWC is this coming Saturday, and you guys have a podcast coming up this week. And I've moved yeah. to your present. At least it's on the table now, along with extras. <laughs> Now, see, I'm getting it ready because I'm actually just sending extras along to say I've been a giant jackass and I missed. So you're going to get your main thing, but you're still getting something else as well. And I hope you enjoy it. You know, I, I'm sure I will. I would have also – I thought about it when I looked at the merch store. I'm like, well, I'm just going to have to order something so you can sneak that in there so you can ship it to me. But I'm not uh, shipping but it. You, but you're not shipping it. You told me you're not shipping it, so that ruined that joke earlier. I had it lined up and everything, but uh, but yeah. So I I can't wait to see it if it does come. It um, will. It will. Okay. I, uh, All right. I'll take a day off work this week just to make sure I ship it. Okay. All right. I'll believe when I see it. It's like the Godfather thing. I'm telling you. I know. It's uh, I'll believe it when I see it, man. He's got uh, this coming weekend. Uh, since we will be off next week again, if you're just joining us and you ended up on the last couple minutes of the podcast, I don't know how uh, we're off next week because Mark is going to be out of town and he just doesn't want to bring his podcast stuff down to Pat's house because Pat has a jungle down. There. No, I'm kidding. I love Pat's family. Um, <laughs> it just it doesn't travel well. Yeah. Um, so you guys are recording. You have your show coming up that releases uh, yeah. next Monday. Yep, it'll be next Monday. Uh, it'll be a Cody update episode, so we'll see what the uh, Codester has going on, and we'll be prepping. There'll be a Moochie minute. We'll be rambling about something. Uh, hopefully, he forgot last week, so we had to do a candy corn thing on the fly, and we'll have a debate about candy corn in, in two weeks or three weeks now on nice. the thirty first. So that's what's coming up for myself uh, yeah. outside of other family functions and that that are going down. Yeah, uh, we'll be recording later on this evening, ready to drop for tomorrow, the second uh, rendition of the Martinez Lounge, as Kelly is bringing the topic, um, a real first episode, because last week was get to meet us and know um, the concept of the show and what's going on and everything, but Kelly's yeah. got the real first topic that we're going to banter about. Um, I am not sure what she's bringing to the table this is the way that we're going to bring topics this is her topic so she's got all her notes she didn't tell me what's going on so um we're going to do the fly with that and then following week will be mine that i won't tell her what and she'll have to do you know responses so yeah that's what's coming up for me very nice i said i did listen to episode one I'm kind of intrigued by this topic this week. See what happens. Yeah, I, it, it could go so many ways with Kelly. It <laughs> really could. I could be buried and not know about it. But let's, let's hope not. Let's keep positive thoughts. Positive. Power of positivity. Yeah. All yeah. right, Jenks. Remember, just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. 
It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. What, what was it going to be called? You you almost didn't yeah. say garbage. I I almost didn't. I was fumbling with my words there. Maybe <sighs> I've had a little bit too much this morning. Who knows? Maybe. All right, Jenks. We'll see you yeah. soon, buddy. I love you. Love you too, buddy. See you guys. Take care.